This is Hannibal here from the HannibalTV.com. And as my guest today, I have former WWE longtime Spanish announcer, AAA Mexico announcer. He also is the guy that runs the biggest news site in the Spanish language, from my understanding. Hugo Savinovich, how are you doing today, sir? Atangana, por foquita, y se remisterio, lanza la catapulta, volando por los aires, la cuenta del árbitro, uno, dos, por foquito. Here we go, my brother, keeping it real. <laughs> and I have, I, I have to correct you. We are not just the number one in uh, the Spanish world. We surpass sports kira. We are the number one uh, in the world in combat sports and in wrestling. So it's it's worldwide, Lucha Libre Online, numero uno. We're number one, my brother. That's amazing. How did you yes. start uh, that whole thing, transitioning from announcing to doing this on the side and it becoming the beast that it is now? Yeah. Um, Victor Quinones, who passed away, was like the guy that helped even Paul Heyman with ECW. He was part owner with Gorilla Monsoon of Capital Sports, and later become, became World Wrestling Council. And uh, him and Javier Gonzalez, my partner, that is the president of Lucha Libre Online, started this dream uh, close to 20 years ago. And about nine years ago, uh, my wife, uh, La Rubia, who passed away uh, a little bit over two years ago, we sat down and uh, we decided to make it happen. And I, I just said to him, one of the things that I want is no matter how successful we get, please never block me from uh, giving the people a message of encouragement and about uh, you know leaving the drugs, alcohol, and I wanna keep that as a deal, uh, as part of this deal. And he has kept his promise and we just hit it so hard. My wife is to help me. So anytime there was news, two, three, four o'clock in the morning, right now it's a 24 seven cycle that includes, um, we got people like uh, Chiqui Star, who's the king of Lucha Libre in Puerto Rico. We have Alberto El Patron, part of our group. We got uh, over 21 reporters uh, with their different segments. And uh, we have also like Spanish uh, lady wrestlers as reporters and even beautiful uh, uh, people that, that are reporters. But the, the ladies, they are uh, wrestlers from of Spain to Puerto Rico to Chile. Uh, we got people, reporters from Costa Rica, just keeping it real. Uh, we are very transparent. So we got a crew of about 42 people, we are not in red numbers. It's a pretty tight uh, enterprise. You know how much it costs to do all this. But we said it, we were gonna do it and people laughed at a Spanish page that, that started in Puerto Rico, how the heck are you gonna do it? And we did it, because like you do, you work your ass up and, and when you do that and you're passionate about what you do, uh, you know, it will pay. Perhaps it will not be quick, it will not be soon, but, but if you stick to it and you're passionate and people sense that you are transparent and you're real, they will follow you. That's the case with Lucha Libre Online and I keep uh, friendships. We have over 49 alliances. Uh, uh, Sports Kita, last week I was twice with them. One, one of the segments, the guy, the guy never has uh, the guest like for a second time and I was there. And uh, just like with you, we have a good relationship. I believe that we are a big community and, and if we get along, and we help each other, uh, the fans will benefit, and we keep it real, passionate, and uh, just uh, a lot of stuff. Uh, Carlos Cabrera just joined uh, Lucha Libre Online, so we got a lot of professionals, interesting people, uh, you know, doing what they do. You mentioned Carlos Cabrera just joining you. He was released, which surprised a lot of people, your former yeah. WWE announced partner, and he stayed on for a long time. Uh -huh. Uh, what's your reaction to his release, and what was his reaction to being released? Oh, I'm also their their pastor. Uh, their kids call me Uncle Hugo, uh, and it, it's been tough. I've been uh, praying uh, with them. We have seen each other in person, and uh, managed to get Dorian, uh, the owner of AAA, uh, to have a conversation with him, and he was our guest on Rey de Reyes in Veracruz, Mexico. And he needed to leave the house and there was just so much pressure. A professional like him, uh, 29 years with WWE, 
a man that uh, possesses one of the most beautiful voices in our industry. He was before play-by-play uh, uh, -play with, with WWE. He was a reporter for Univision, uh, news anchor. He, at many times in New York, had the morning shows, the Spanish station, uh, had the number one program in New York, and then he had on, on another FM station, uh, just himself, he had a another uh, the top ten shows in New York, which includes the English market. So he has been very successful. His voice is one of the top voices for car commercials, for big chains of stores, even for airline. Uh, it's just very sad uh, the way it ended. Uh, but I'm not, you know, strange about that. It happened to Jim Ross. It happens to me. Uh, Corporations will will decide at some time they want to go a different route, and they will find you know any any reason or whatever to just say, hey, this is it. It's time to say goodbye. And I was there just like Carlos was there for me. Now it's my turn as brothers that we are, and we're working very hard. There's a lot of offers for him right now, including from my uh, company. I'll give you an exclusive as we do this right now the owner of AAA, it's talking business to Carlos. And there's already like four other big companies, huge companies that are after him. So good possibilities. I, I love the fact that we were together after 11 years of not doing play by play together. But to me, more important than that is that he has to go where it's more convenient and profitable for his family. He's got two kids in college. You know how this is. And now with the the, the precedent that we have here in the United States, gas is up to like $4. Uh, inflation, it's crazy. So even with a good job, and you know it's it's tough right now with the inflation and everything, fuel being so high. So there's a lot of challenges, and I'm just praying that he has uh, the best offer, even if, if it's not with me, because my deal is uh, I'm with AAA. I, I help Conan. I'm his right hand with the creative, so he's my boss. And we're doing beautiful things, and I'm telling you that I cannot be, uh, I, I will give you another scoop. There's something big that has been built in Cancun that AAA is just gonna do something uh, bigger style in Cancun. That's as far as I could go there. And as far as the global part of the AAA, there's gonna be amazing things happening by May that will just literally shock the world with with triple a so um, um i don't put any pressure i said brother you gotta take what's best for you your wife and your kids and or you know that i love you i would love to to have you with me but you gotta go with the best offer that's the same uh uh you know advice that i will give uh anybody that that it's in that position especially my brother you know uh, of course you know my instinct is said ah oh, let me keep him with me because i know he's so great for our product and what happened in Raid the Regis and Better Cruz just it was news. It was like crazy. It was it was just that that chemistry that that we had and we still have together. It's just magic and his voice is so powerful, so beautiful. Even Jim Ross said to me, you know, one of those Hall of Fame uh, inductions, he was sitting next to us and and Jim said uh, about Carlos, he said, if only I would have had Carlos' voice. And we're talking about one of the best guys in our industry, English play-by-play. -play. And that's what Jim Ross said about uh, Carlos Boyce. It's, you know, let's see what happens. I just want him to be happy. Uh, he's not right now. Uh, you know, you were in a place for 29 years and boom, you're, you're fired. It's, it's hard. I went through that. It's not a good feeling, especially like with me. The, it was like the longest vacation I took, a building what is now WWE at that time was my longest vacation was two days and I helped to uh, for the producers from Russia, China, uh, Japan, their announcers, I trained them or they will come to the studio in Stanford or we do it through live video uh, uh, chats and we had translators who they didn't talk English or Spanish. So it was 70 years of almost no free time and I'm so proud of what we helped to accomplish. And it's just so sad now that without Carlos, I just listened to the one on uh, Monday night of Marcelo, who I love. 
and uh, Jerry Soto, who's substituting Carlos. And now AEW, it's not the only one with the worst Spanish play-by-play. -play. Now WWE is right there with AEW. Worst play-by-play -play in Spanish ever, ever, ever. Well, if I spoke Spanish, I would be able to know that, but uh, I don't speak it that well. I only know how to pick up girls. <laughs> hey, <laughs> that is already a pressure. What, what are you talking about? That is great. Now, I know you're friends with, with Cody Rhodes. I used a picture of him kissing you as the screenshot of this. What's uh, your scoop of what's going on with him these days? Uh, I knew more than was stated we as you know in this business we have from wrestlers to the top stars to producers to creative people to owners uh that they will talk to us and sometimes they will say hey this it's just confidential and sometimes a big star will say hey you could say this just make sure you don't mention me and sometimes it's just the respect that a lot of people know that uh when they talk to me and they say to me confidential, that stays confidential. And I will never risk anything uh, of a person or a talent or a company just to get a like. And I think, and you know, as you have succeeded doing this, that uh, we don't have to do that. We just gotta do great stuff at what we do and people will follow us. We don't have to hurt nobody. And that's been my philosophy. So I knew there was, there was like a little hell happening at AW then uh, started getting the message that no longer did the vice presidents were in charge of storylines, that that Tony was in charge completely. And I love Tony. I think he, he's good. Uh, I, I think this industry needed needs him. It also needs uh, New Japan to get stronger, Triple A, which is gonna get stronger. And I hope that Consejo Mundial from Mexico also get stronger because they have the money. They, they, I don't know what the heck is wrong with them. I want to see a big comeback from Ring of Honor. I want to see uh, a, a big investment in Impact Wrestling so it could do what it's supposed to do with all the time that it's been around from TNA. And MLW is like that like little dark horse that I believe has a lot of potential. But I also believe that we need another, another big thing happening. I think AAA is going to do that, but I would love to have another big, big investment because that is good for our industry, for the boys, for the whole talent. And I started hearing things and wow, I said, I said back then, this doesn't look good because it's a new product. They're doing good. I think they have a TV deal. They, I don't know, like 175 million for their product, which is pretty good considering uh, the time that they have uh, with this baby wrestling company, because still a baby. Uh, I think that Tony wants to do good things. I just, I'm just not a fan of one guy or one lady making all the decisions. I know as a boss, you got to say, okay, we'll go with this. I understand that. But when you have all the power because you own the place, but you don't have the experience, you're a successful businessman like Tony is, owner of an FL team, soccer teams, big investments around the world. Yes, very successful, very smart, loves the business, very passionate, respectful, a great guy. But we already experienced that in a way with Dixie Carter and TNA and she had good intentions, beautiful people, but you know, it wasn't done right. And I believe right now that's the problem with AEW. So I saw it coming and then what I thought that, that that was clashing because when you're a founder like uh, Cody Rhodes and the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega, and you have a deal will set the whole wrestling community on fire, but then you see that they managed to conquer and defeat NXT, even causing longer, more damages like we've seen with uh, now NXT 2.0 and Triple H out of the picture and everybody fired, but Shawn Michaels and just a whole different crew so that they succeeded. NXT was not able to stop them, but they, I think they just forgot that the wrestling business around the world only knows one name and that is WWE. I don't care if you are AEW, New Japan, 
AAA, Consejo Mundial, Impact, Ring of Honor, MLW, and you know, put anything there, Impact, whatever. And, and people don't understand this. And if you don't understand this, you cannot succeed as a company. Uh, the eyes of the world are WWE. And for you to put your product over, you're gonna have to work four times harder than WWE. And you cannot try to imitate them or bring their talent or ex talent to your company and then do almost the same horrible creative ideas as, as WWE is doing, uh, which was one of the cases with Rusev and then with Matt. And I don't know what the heck is going to happen when Jeff signs with them. But they have brought big stars uh, from the Shield, Dean Ambrose with a new name and all that stuff. But nothing that clicks. And they just have new talent that are going to be good, uh, uh, but they're not there yet. And they have the names, the star power names from WWE, and yet they, they don't know what the heck they're doing. So I knew there was a conflict with the Cody, and I knew more information. But at first, I was praying that that didn't happen. And then as weeks progressed, uh, we found out that there was no signing of a contract. And that was, that was like, wow. I mean, he's one of the VIPs of the company, vice president, and he hadn't signed. Uh, contract. Many people said, oh, this is an angle. I said, there's ways to do an angle, and this ain't an angle. So as uh, things went really bad, we heard about uh, problems between Tony Khan and Cody Rhodes. They have denied that, the two of them. Uh, I, uh, There's a lot of people that have, uh, you know, they don't look at Cody uh, the right way. But one thing they forget is once you become one of the bosses, or a booker in a territory or in a company, there's gonna be a lot of people that like you and a lot of people that dislike you because when you are in the power power seat, you know, that power chair, uh, everybody wants you to push it, to push them, and not everybody's gonna be happy. And that was the story there. And uh, the moment they started taking uh, them out of the picture, especially Cody, because remember, I always said, yes, man, are not good for the future of an investment or a company. And Cody has never been, I don't think he will never be a yes man, respectful, yes. You see Cody next to me, and he, at that moment, he was not one of the top guys of AEW. He was a young son that I met with my best, one of my best friends, the American Dream, Dusty Rose, so respectful. One of the, one of the big matches in WWE, uh, he had two pair of boots. It was like a big shot for him. And his father was no longer there. And he came to me and said, Hugo, which one you like? And to me, that was like respect. That was like, okay, daddy's not here. My brother's not here, but Hugo is here. And I said, this one, that's the one he wore. I always gave him good advice. I love Cody. I will back him up anytime, whatever he needs from me. I'm here. He's a beautiful person. He's real. He's not fake. And I think that, that this is going to hurt. AEW, not just because of star power is going to be doing a product with Vince, but when you have one of the top stars of AEW next to Vince McMahon in WWE, that it's not good for the balance of what your product is. It's going to make WWE look like, hey, even the vice president, one of the vice presidents of AEW decided that we are number one. And, and the boys and everybody in WWE, they're happy because, you know, Cody left. But when he left, uh, he proved that he was a winner. Triple H said, hey, when he gave him advice, he says, maybe it's time for you to, you know, run and 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 see what, what you come up with. And he came up with AEW and uh, a good product, not an excellent product. I think it has a lot of potential. And I think the fact that he did that, the, that hammer thing with the throne of Triple H, that there, it's already a storyline. And you said, well, Hugo, Triple H has the hard problems. Yes, but Triple H is Vince McMahon's family, and the wife is there, and, and uh, Co Cody has his wife, who's a wrestler, Brad is a wrestler. So you could go many ways with this, but I think this has the potential of being huge, and I think if they let Cody be part of the creative team, we will have a guy that is not going to be a yes man, and that was one of my things. Uh, I always respected Vince. I still respect him. I love him. I pray for him and his company every day, but I was never a yes man. I will never be a yes man, but I'm respectful. 
uh, Conan is my boss. I'm part of the creative team. He's a top guy. Then I follow and then all the two assistants. And once I, I tell him an idea and he doesn't like it and he says to me, Hugo, this is not going to work right now. Hey, that's it. Let's go. Let's do something else. Whatever he needs, let's do it. Uh, whatever the boss is there, say, uh, you know, if I'm happy with it, I will tell him, hey, let's do it. But if I'm not happy, I will say respectfully, I will say, uh, Dory, I, I think we could do better. Or to Conan, I'll say, my brother, you know that I love you, but I think we could do this with this talent. Most of the times we come into an agreement. Uh, sometimes it don't happen that we had to respect that they are the owners and Conan is my boss. But Cody will, will test you. The passion of Cody Rhodes, he's like me and like Conan. We don't sleep. <laughs> I don't know about you because you know that when we do this, I mean, we are passionate about this stuff and we are like, it doesn't matter if we're on vacation and my partner calls me, the heck if I'm on vacation, boom, I turn this thing on and I could be sleeping, the phone ring, boom, do it, wash my face, do it. I think Cody will bring that. I think Bron uh, Cody will challenge the system in WWE. I think Cody, Cody Rhodes will bring that substance that is it's missing in WWE. I think that people are afraid in WWE to be creative. I think that people like Kevin Dunn, and other people like the main guy right now at the last same last name can can uh, they have put fear into people and fear will destroy creative creative thoughts uh people are afraid they're no longer happy in WWE. uh the talent is usually upset about the way ideas are, are put together even the top guys and girls and and i have this as a fact and it's scary when you're the top company in the world who made on, on one of the worst times in our history with the COVID situation. 2021, Hannibal, they made a profit of $1,000 million. On 2021, they have the best deals on TV deals. They make money with uh, Saudi Arabia. They're, they're shopping you know, products, it's it's incredible, the licensing. No excuses to have such a bad product right now. Now, as far as Brandy goes, there's been some reports saying they wouldn't be bringing her in too, but I don't see why they wouldn't want to sign <clears throat> for multiple reasons, because she's also on that TV show with Cody and, and she's a star. So do you think Brandy would really be left out of a, of a possible jump to WWE? No, I think this is just an angle because I, the way I see it, with Triple H not being able to be back in, 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 you know, because of his health, you have to attack either Shane McMahon or or Stephanie. And if you're gonna go and attack Stephanie, then uh, Cody has to help, but Brandy has to do the ass kicking and and to let the whole world just, remember that scene when Shane McMahon was in Nitro and said, uh, a McMahon, it's the owner of uh, World Championship Wrestling and, and he was in Florida and they took over Nitro. I think you have an excellent, an excellent opportunity to do that with Brandy and Cody. It will be believable. He was one of the bosses in AEW. Not only that, what he brings is an interracial uh, marriage and that, it's something that, you know, you might not want to touch this subject, but it's the perception. This is a white, uh, successful guy that fell in love with an Afro-American beautiful girl. And when this happened, it was a lot of heat, even his family. And he fought against the world. Now that I have a beautiful baby, I think you tell a story just by having her there. And if we're going to go into how to make the war between uh uh, Cody and uh, Brandy and the McMahons is right there. And I will not be too far out to mention that uh, Dustin uh, could be used right here. Remember, you have the the, the, the rights to use gold dust when you are in WWE. And because uh, uh, first he said, no, I'm staying in AEW. But then he said, I will see you on the other side. I will see you, Cody, on the other side, brother to brother. So. What is the other side? Of course, WWE. So you've got many ways to go. And I think Cody, Brandy, and a Gold Dust uh, team could be 
profitable and I would love to see them hurt somebody like Shane. And my, as a creative, I see better uh, Stephanie because I would, took, I would take a shot of Triple H watching it at home in bed and his hand shaking as he sees his wife uh, being attacked by Brandy and Cody just looking at him and said, this is bigger than just destroying your throne. So I just gave WWE a big, big creative idea. They should send me money. Uh, and usually I gotta be careful because uh, my wife used to say, you just, uh, you love this so much that you wanna tell the fans the stories and, and this is money. And that's what I get, I make my money. I do a lot of consulting, a lot of stuff that normally doesn't come out on public. And even at one time, I did something like that for, you're not gonna believe it, for WWE. And this is like the first time that I officially say that. Very interesting. Well, maybe <laughs> they should take some of your advice, as you said, because I've I've tried watching it and I can't last through more than five minutes. Yes, yes. And 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 this is horrible. That they are the number one product in the world, the, the most recognized. I mean, you could be the best wrestler in the world, but if you're not right there at WWE, uh, they, they will know you're you're good, beautiful wrestler. But that is the that is the brand, you know. When you have uh, all these guys like Bad Bunny and all this uh, interaction they do with stars and and all this stuff, uh, and you have uh, all this power and money and all these TV stations that pay you more than than you know close to a billion for five years of Raw, five years of SmackDown. Well, sometimes those big networks says, "Hey, we're paying you great money." What have you done for us lately? And I don't think they have done too good. I, I love the story with Paul Heyman and uh, what happened with Brock and with Roman Reigns. I think Roman Reigns has become beautiful with uh, Paul Heyman. I love the set, freaking Rawlings. I would love for them to be smart enough to join that and make a real power couple uh, with Becky. I think that franchise, because people know in real life they are a couple, so I think that if they make him evil and so interesting as they are to get it. Not that, they, not that she, she cannot be a champion and he cannot be a champion, but as, as one unit, I think you have star power there, something fresh, something that will, will draw back uh, fans that are disappointed. And there are fans that are disappointed, not just with WWE, they're disappointed with the whole wrestling scene. I mean, you know, and, that's, and I'm always, I'm honest, I, I say that in Mexico, at TV Azteca, by rules and their negotiations, Televisa and, and TV Azteca, they, they sign contracts, but they control the announcers. They want to have their own announcers. And we have AAA on TV Azteca right now, Televisa and TV Azteca. Sometimes TV Azteca is number one, then Televisa is number one. But I'm talking about such a huge potential. And our announcers there, they don't do a good job with AAA. And I'm about the only guy that is dares to say this because that's my product you know but the truth would be the truth and and uh aw it's uh has an alliance with us kenny omega until recently uh he was our mega champion he was dethroned because of the injury uh and we have stars from aw uh, coming to us uh, uh ftr it's our our world champions so and when i have to say that their product sucks i will say it because I want them to get better. I don't do anything uh, to hurt nobody. I, I just believe that uh, you have to keep improving your product. Even myself as a play-by-play play -play play -play announcer, commentator, producer, promoter, analyst, uh, creative, every day I'm, I'm, I'm trying to learn more. Every day I, I, I become more passionate about what I do because I think there's always room, no matter how good you are, to keep improving. You gotta, you gotta get fresh. And with the product, you got the people have to feel your intensity, your love, your passion, and that that's the way I, I feel. Now Goldberg revealed just before his Saudi Arabia match that that was the last match of his WWE contract. Do you think AEW will make an offer to him to to jump over, or what's your opinion on that? Well, I have more information on that. Uh, 
I I believe that Vince it's not gonna let him go because uh, in a way uh, after the catastrophe of some shots that really bad one with the Undertaker and then uh, Saudi Arabia doing the, uh, the thing with Goldberg where he took and destroyed the Fiend and the matches that they have put him over. I think he's more credible now. I think people know that he's never going to be that gold dust that had that uh, streak of victories in Nitro. Uh, I think that people are in peace to know where Goldberg is, but I think he's an icon. I think he's a legend. I don't think Vince will let him go. I just have that, that feeling that because uh, the people that control WWE in Saudi Arabia love Goldberg. They, see, their 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 watch stopped years ago. <laughs> a lot of them. Nice don't... watch, by the way. Huh? You have a nice watch, by the oh, way. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Th that has stopped there. They they don't they they still remember like they, they they wanted to bring Ultimate Warrior. He's been dead. I mean, they just they 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 remember things of the Attitude Era, and a lot of those guys. Are no longer here or gone. So when you have a Goldberg, uh, I mean, the people that control that that kingdom, uh, they rule, and they rule. Basically, they tell Vince what they want, and Vince will give it to them. So I think, just from that standpoint of of Saudi Arabia and what that brings to Vince's pocket, and they like Goldberg, I don't think they will let him go. If not just for that reason, because you don't want Goldberg to be with AEW. And AEW and Tony Khan having that to offer, let's say, to Saudi Arabia. Remember, these people are not faithful to nobody. I don't want to get into the blood, mo you know, blood money and what they did to one of their reporters and all the heat that I got because I was the only guy that fought the monster of WWE. And at the end, even the wrestlers, I had Andrade uh, exclusive with Andrade, and I wasn't even talking about that one. He. He publicly said what happened on that airport. So there's been wives of wrestlers. So whatever they tried to deny, finally came to truth. And you know they had to settle with the Kansas City people. I think it was over 30 million. And and then the lawyer that was trying to hurt my image uh, was fired uh, when they really had to make that deal with that uh, company from Kansas City. I remember if it was 27 million or a little bit more. But they had to settle. And yet they were saying that I was lying. And then more people started coming and other people started talking and uh, what I'm saying with this is Saudi Arabia has a lot of control. They love Goldberg and if nothing else, just to keep control on Goldberg for their shows, uh, they will keep him. I don't think it will be more than four or five matches a year or six. I think that he has that intensity. He has one speed and that same speed as an FL player and that Goldberg we saw on those golden years of Nitro that they used to kick our butt every Monday night. I think that he, that's the only speed that he knows to handle. And unfortunately, as we get older, you know, we, we, we still dream we could do things, but then our body says, hey, buddy, we can't. So that's the reality there. I don't think Vince would let him go because I think he's, he's an icon. And an icon, even if you put him in a three, four minute match, if the storyline is good, he will draw you and he will be ratings and he will be a big name uh, to have on your card, and especially with AEW now. Uh, they they are not going to let him go. So I know that that is almost like a hundred percent. They will not let him go. And it's uh, the 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 ball is on on uh, the advantages to Goldberg because when you know that they need you and they, they will be crazy to let you go, then you know through his agent you could have a better deal. And I think he will. How much uh, do you think he makes about a match right now from his last uh, contract? Uh, oh, Saudi Arabia is a different story, you know, because of the fact that they 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 pay uh, different there. But I think uh, on WWE's terms, uh, on on WWE property shows, uh, I, there's been many com comments about that. I haven't haven't accept, accepted one of them. I look at him, what he represents, and I think he must be around seven hundred thousand per match. I think that there's a, there he doesn't get paid uh, that money when he just does promos. I think that probably be like half uh, of that money, but I think he should be around seven hundred to uh, three hundred per match. We have heard about Brock getting over a million per per show, and there's other. You always gotta remember remember there's other bonuses 
that there is often not talked. And it, that also includes your merchandise. That's a different check. Uh, some guys have, and girls have clauses on uh, ratings. If you help their ratings, and there's, there's so many, so many little things that become huge when it comes to money compensation. And each deal, it's, it's different. It's different. Uh, so I, I truly believe that when he goes to, to Goldberg goes to Saudi Arabia, I think he makes more than a million, perhaps a little bit over a million uh, per show. Because you know that once they wanted Shawn Michaels to return, I, I think they gave him over $2 million. Because they're a kingdom, they don't have to disclose it. And if you make a deal with them, uh, they will tell you, you cannot come up public with that. And, and it was, to me, uh, the advancement of what I have told people for years now, that what they see themselves is, uh, even though this horrendous situation with the fuel has skyrocketed against uh, each barrel of oil, uh, they already are on another phase. They want to make their kingdom a tourist paradise. In order to do that, they have to have the best tournaments and, and all that. So they, when they, when they thought about doing that, they knew that they needed something like wrestling because they love wrestling there. But to see where they're willing to go uh, from the women being covered completely and going to the ring to being allowed to have for the first time their posters in the streets of the capital of Saudi Arabia with no covering on their face, all of that. So I see they're, 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 they're going ahead with their plans, even though oil is again high. Uh, they still going with this has to become that touristic place that you're not you're not going to find any other any other place in around here with the exception I guess of uh, uh, I believe it's Qatar or one of those places. Uh, there's another place, Dubai, Dubai. Yes, that I have heavily invested on on you know touristic attractions, but I think that that people know less about Saudi Arabia and Vince. I think that uh, there's a bigger partnership that we are, are we are informed, and I will not be surprised if there is a deal to sell WWE to Saudi Arabia. We know that Disney is uh, interested, but the price they were not too happy with that. Uh, I think with people like uh, Bad Bunny, all that stories that might be changing the way Disney sees about the property because. Uh, around eight billion dollars or nine billion dollars. When UFC sold, it sold for like five and a half billion dollars, and I think that that WWE right now it's around eight billion to eight billion and a half, and not too many people could afford that. But I think that uh, especially now with the uh, fuel going going skyrocket each each week, I don't know how many more millions they're making as the each barrel is so high right now that they have the money to while this fuel thing is going on to keep investing on making saudi arabia that touristic kingdom and i think that they have a deal with vince that we don't know about but he was willing to take a chance when they were in a lot of heat with what what happened on on uh on turkey with one of their their citizens and even the situation with the plane and the wrestlers and how that changed where now nobody leaves, even if they own their own planes until everybody leaves. So uh, I think there's a lot of things happening and never overlook the power of Saudi Arabia. They right now, they control WWE because I believe that there's a bigger deal and Vince makes more money there than with, with his WrestleMania. And you have to be practical. I might criticize him from the reasons you already know, but I also have to look at the business side. And a lot of the guys and girls, they're not happy of going there, but they don't want to jeopardize their push, their contract, because Vince is not going to look, you know, unless you are like a John Cena or a Reigns that would say that. Even, even they will get a lot of heat, but at least they are already made. Uh, but I think that right now, Saudi Arabia, it is so important to WWE. And I will not be uh doubtful that these guys from uh Saudi Arabia are on the hunt of buying the biggest property on sports entertainment because of the content that they have. I mean 
the 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 hours and hours, not just of WWE product, but they, the ones they bought from world class championship wrestling, from the you know the world class uh, championship wrestling, and uh, the they have bought. AWA, I think. Yeah, yeah. ECW, they own that. There's a lot of hardcore fans. ECW. Yes, they they own names. They own everything. They could do half an hour shows with each character. I mean, you give that property to Saudi Arabia, they could make a hundred TV studios, and each could be working on these characters because they own everything. And and there's some shows there. Remember the one. Um, from Mid South Sports, of, of, of yes, of, well, yeah, they bought that too. Mid South Wrestling, yes, and I worked there as a wrestler. And that's another story. Uh, uh, man, it was just crazy times. That's where the Freebirds and uh, at the time smoking marijuana on that area was so dangerous because the fans, the the fans know that they will arrest wrestlers, they will arrest the fans, they will beat you up, and I was arrested in Bourbon Street. I was there with a with a couple of the guys. I think I can't remember all the guys. The boys were there, and I tried to beat the the record at Pat O'Brien's, and I haven't drank in like twenty nine years. But back then, I did, uh, and I tried to go for the record on the consecutive hurricanes, and by the fourth one, I just passed out, and they were taking me back to the car. I think it was Terry Gordy, uh, God rest his soul. Buddy Roberts was one of them. I love Buddy Roberts. Crazy guys. Love him and uh, Mike Miller, one of the young guys, and, uh, and I can't remember the other guys. But they were trying to take me to the car, and just in front of me, there was one of the police guys on a horse. And it, if you were drunk, they would put you into a small jail until you felt better in the morning. Then they would let you go. So the sergeant, I think, said to the guys, uh, "Is he drunk?" No, he's okay, officer. And I'm, I'm they're holding me, and I started vomiting on the horse. And they had to run with me to the car. I I vomited on myself. It was just harrowing. I used to live in Baton Rouge back then. So there's there's so much stuff that they that they own. And and for this digital era that we live, that's a treasure. That's a treasure. And I think that Saudi Arabia has more power control on Vince than we know. Very interesting. Well, I really appreciate you joining us and, and giving your insight into the latest news. Could you let us know again where the fans can follow Lucha Libre online and you personally on social media? Yes, it's Lucha Libre online and from Twitch to Instagram to Facebook, Lucha Libre online. We have over 21 reporters, including Alberto El Patron, Chiqui Star, Carlos Cabrera, Hugo Savinovich. We got uh, lady wrestlers from around the world that are reporters, a crew of over 42 people. Lucha Libre Online 24 7, 365, the number one in the world in combat sports and, and wrestling in all languages. And we are there to entertain you. And there's always a lot of things happening in Lucha Libre Online. I, I am so happy of what we have been able to create. And I also want to congratulate you, my friend, because you keep you know, putting the product higher and higher. And uh, you, don't, you don't stay at a point because you have succeeded. You're always hungry for more, and I respect that. And that's why whenever you tell me you want me on or whatever you need, I'm uh, Lucia Libre and myself, we'll always be there for you because you are good for the business. And this business, if they were doing as good stories as we are doing in our media, because sometimes there's more entertainment in, in, in your side, on my side, than on the wrestling shows of the top companies. If they could only do what we do, I think the fans will be happy. So I bless you, my friend, and I, I'm, I'm always rooting for you. And may the good Lord make this 2022 the best year for you in your private life, in your commercial life, and uh, that uh, you keep this passion because this is what drives our fans when they see that we are real, that we're passionate as they are. And in Lucha Libre, man, Hugo Savinovich, you will always have an open door, my friend, and, and may this be the best year in this business and in your private life, and may you be prosperous, and, and may our good God, Jesus, give you the wishes of your heart, and I always, 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 always will be here for you, my friend. Take care. Atanga! Thank you, sir. Thank you for watching the Hannibal TV. 
please help me out and like this video.